So, so I recently got this DM on Instagram, basically stating that he needed help getting into college and exploring all the wonders of music theory. And as many of you already know, horn players and woodwind players and piano players, they deal with notes. Drummers, like me, we don't deal with a whole lot of notes. Now in high school, if you're in band, you're usually expected to learn music theory there. That wasn't the case for my high school. A normal day in band would be the whole class watching Frozen while me and the other drummers would be in the drum closet just doing stupid shit and practicing drum sets. So going back to this DM, I had a very similar question to the time when I first joined college and I failed music theory. I failed it hard. At the time, I was a part of this very large Facebook group only for drummers. And the admin of that Facebook group was a very accomplished drummer. I'm not gonna say his name. He was an older gentleman, but this guy, he was a straight up All I did was ask a simple question. I said, hey man, how did you get through college when you had to take the same classes that the piano players were taking? And he basically told me to fuck off. And then later he came back and said, I have the perfect solution. I'll post your question word for word on the group page and see what people have to say about it. And I'm just like, can you just answer the question? So he posted it and there is a war of people. Some people are saying music theory is useless in the professional world. Some people are saying like, get out of here. Other people are going, music theory is good. But you know, at the end of all that, at the end of all that, I didn't even get my answer. So now I'm here to tell you how I pass music theory. And hopefully this helps people, particularly drummers that have no knowledge or background in music theory. Now the first thing you're gonna need is a piano. It doesn't matter what kind of piano or keyboard you have, you need to get one if you don't already have one. In Western music, there are only 12 notes per octave. You have to know the name of those notes and how to read them. Now, if you're already in school doing music, I assume that you already know the name of those notes. If you don't know the name of those notes, you need to grow up. Now, the first thing you should know are your major and minor scales. Why? Because when you're reading music, you obviously want to know what key you're in. Now this is why owning a keyboard is so important. Once you start practicing these things so much, you start to develop a thing called muscle memory. I cannot stress enough how good this has done for me in music theory classes. Let's say I'm analyzing a song in F major. I could literally picture an invisible keyboard on my desk and finger the F major scale just like that. I would go, okay, this has one flat in it. That one flat is B flat. Okay, this is gonna make analyzing this tune way easier. Piano is definitely one of those instruments where it's super easy to learn and everything is laid out for you, just like that. You just sit at a keyboard and bam. If you play the instrument like trumpet, you got three buttons. Piano, all 12 notes are laid here, right for you. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. 10, 11, 12. Ouch. Fuck. So yes, if you want to simplify your learning experience, then just get on the piano. It makes things so much easier. It's like having an invisible cheat sheet. Which brings me to my next point chords, more specifically seventh chords. Seventh chords were not invented in jazz. It's written all over classical music. And because you're most likely not gonna be learning about any jazz in your theory classes, coming across a seventh chord for the first time in a classical composition might come off as surprising. At least it did from my classical peers and colleagues, but it won't surprise you. You wanna know why? Because we're going back to the piano and we're gonna learn some seventh chords. If you don't already know what a seventh chord is, think of a triad, C major triad. All a seventh chord is, is you're adding an extra note on top of that triad, a seventh above the root of that chord. So this makes the C major triad, C major seven. But you still gotta know all the seventh chords. There's your minor seventh chord. Your dominant seventh chord. seventh chord your half diminished seventh chord and then you have a minor major seventh chord and then your augmented seventh chord now you can learn all of the chords and all of the keys going up chromatically, going through the circle of fifths. For me, I personally like going through the circle of fourths. That's just preference. Keep repeating the process and eventually you'll have all of the chords memorized by muscle memory. And just finger the notes that are on the staff and figure out the chord that way with 
within the key, obviously. That was the number one thing that helped me in music theory, I kid you not. Learning that made everything else after that, music theory two, three, four, and five, it made everything so much easier because I knew my major and minor scales and I knew all of the chords. Well, I hope I helped you out, random guy on Instagram or anyone in a similar situation. I know I wish I had some advice like that when I was first going in. But at the time, it really felt like I was in a, a super unique situation. Like I, I literally felt like I was the only one in school with no knowledge on this stuff. But the piano thing just changed everything. I ended up with higher scores than people that studied this stuff for years. Thank you for watching this video. Please subscribe. Please thumbs up the video. And if you didn't like the video, then grow up.